Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my first experience trying ayahuasca in Costa Rica at the Solterra Healing Center. So it took me a bit of time to come out and actually record this video right now, uh, just because my experience was very intense and it's a bit hard to put into words to just kind of explain or describe what it was that I ex experienced. Um, and partly because it's also deeply personal and I wasn't sure how much of that I wanted to share. But ultimately I concluded that I am willing to share anything with you guys um, that has benefited me in hopes that it can benefit you as well. And ayahuasca was a transformative experience for me. So it may or may not be the right fit for you. I don't know. I can think of many people who this would be uh, transformative for them to experience. But I also know that it's not for everyone. And I seriously mean that it's not for everyone. Um, and I'll explain why further in this video. Um, but with this video, you can gain a level of awareness if you don't know what ayahuasca is. And from that point, you can make an informed decision or further educate yourself to determine whether or not it is the right fit for you. So what is ayahuasca? Ayahuasca is a plant medicine, meaning that the ingredients are 100% natural. They come from nature. They come from the Amazon. The two main ingredients are leaves and vines, and these are brewed together to create the ayahuasca tea. Sometimes there are other ingredients that may be added in, but those are the primary two ingredients. Now the leaves contain a psychoactive called DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and this is what creates for an altered state of consciousness. Now plant medicine is far from the new age movement. This is something that has existed for hundreds if not thousands of years and the indigenous in South America, it's been part of their traditions for centuries and they use it for a variety of different purposes. They use it for physical illnesses, they use it for mental illnesses and they even use it for spiritual crises. Now, there are many different indigenous tribes uh, in South America. They all have different traditions and different ways of using ayahuasca. Um, the most popular places where ayahuasca is used is in Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Brazil. So I think one way to describe plant medicine is to compare it to modern medicine. In modern medicine, we've excelled at being able to identify the root cause of physical illness. And with plant medicine, ayahuasca, we are able to look at the emotional, the energetic, the spiritual root causes of dis-ease by opening up, opening up a channel to the subconscious inner landscapes. Now the shamans believe that illnesses and diseases are manifestations of blockages or knots in the energy body of a person. Or if there's excess or insufficient energy, then it creates an imbalance in the system. And this is often rooted from traumas that take place throughout our life, um, childhood. Throughout life, we're all experiencing traumas. Some are small, some are big, but oftentimes we don't handle them. We don't deal with them. And they get swept under the rug and they sit there and they create these blockages. So people will take ayahuasca for a variety of different reasons, but I think ultimately what it does is it helps us to release helps us to complete that unfinished business, if you will, by working on things that got swept under the rug. And it can ultimately lead to a higher state of consciousness once that step has been dealt with. And so oftentimes you'll hear people saying, you know, I had to face my demons uh, during my ceremony. And, and that's a good thing. You know, it might be scary and it, chances are it, it will be. You know, you, if you read about ayahuasca, you might uh, feel a little bit intimidated. I know I was before I went um, because a lot of people are facing their demons. But that is how you push past it. You have to face them because if you're always running away from them, you're never dealing with them. You have to meet them head on. So it's really powerful. And ayahuasca is nicknamed Mother Aya. And I think it's nicknamed Mother Aya because like a mother, mothers know best. Mothers just know what their children need, even if their children don't know. You know, when a children is crying and cranky and the mother knows the kid needs to sleep, even if the kid isn't aware of that. And my experience with ayahuasca was exactly like that. Mother Aya knew what it is that I needed, even 
before I, I knew what it was that I needed. At the end of my experience, I felt like that it was exactly what I needed, but I never could have requested that because I wasn't aware that that's what I needed. So now I'm gonna be sharing with you my personal experience. So I have been wanting to do ayahuasca for a number of years now. I heard about it first from my partner, Stefan. He had done it, I think, 13 years ago. He did not have a great experience. He was one of those people who, you know, his friend was like, hey, do you wanna go do ayahuasca? He's like, great, let's go. After I have this all-you-can-eat sushi. <laughs> and he just went that day to do it. And that's not the way you do ayahuasca. And I really learned that by attending Solterra Healing Center. You gotta respect the medicine and they teach you that even before you arrive at their retreat, there's a dieta that you have to follow. And the dieta is a type of diet to cleanse your body. It includes eliminating things like pork, alcohol, drugs, sex, uh, salt, high fat foods, lots of oils, certain types of smoked fish, um, so there's a lot of things that you're cutting out from your diet for a period of one to two weeks before you even arrive at Solterra and then again after you after the retreat. Now you do this to prepare your body because your body's going to be going through quite a bit when it takes the plant medicine and it's going to help you to experience the plant medicine more fully and to do more healing work. Um, if your body is, you know, full of McDonald's and, and it's very toxic, well, you're gonna be purging a lot and it might take away from the healing that you could otherwise experience. Another reason is because it's a sign of respect. You're respecting the medicine. This is the way it's been done for centuries and traditions and this is the diet that they follow and you're following that too. Uh, you're preparing yourself. It's also a sign, it shows your commitment. You know, you're, you're committed to, to healing. You're committed to um, experiencing this fully. You're not just showing up that day and, um, you know, who cares what happens. You're actually preparing yourself for this experience. So we did that two weeks before arriving. Now for me, safety was the number one priority if I'm going to do ayahuasca. I wanted to make sure that I'm going to the best place where I feel safe and secure in that environment. You have to be very um, transparent and honest about your health because as I mentioned, it is not for everyone. Um, if, you are, uh, if you have bipolar disorder or psychosis, this is not the right fit for you because it actually can make those things worse. It can trigger schizophrenia. Um, so that would be important to know in advance. And then there are some medications that can intervene with the plant medicine that can be fatal. And so it's very important to go somewhere where they are taking that seriously, where they are doing a questionnaire, where they do have a doctor on site. And so usually when you hear about these deaths from ayahuasca, know that it's not about the plant medicine itself. It's about the lack of proper care and the lack of honesty from the people who are taking it. So um, Solterra, I did a lot of research and we found that it was just highly reviewed, lots and lots of positive reviews. Um, it's a really beautiful retreat, a beautiful location, beautiful environment. And upon getting there, um, I can tell you that it's definitely a luxury experience. Uh, if you wanna go somewhere and just have the best, uh, most luxurious ayahuasca experience, then Solterra is that. I highly recommend it. Stefan and I, we, we shared a room, um, had two, uh, I think, uh, king-size beds, maybe queens, I think it was king, two king-size beds, uh, really beautiful, really modern, really clean, um, and we are right on the beach too, so we have access to walk down to the beach area. Um, there's a pool, there's a lounge area, there's a lot of hammocks all over the place, there's a fitness f facility if you do want to work out. Um, so it's a really beautiful, beautiful environment. And, and that's where ayahuasca is meant to be done. It's, it's meant to be done in the jungle, it's meant to be done in nature. And so at this uh, event you have, I think there's over 21 acres of nature. So you wake up in the morning and you're hearing the sounds of the jungle and it's really, really a beautiful thing. Uh, on top of that, there, the food there is just incredible. There's a chef named Jesse and he makes the highest quality food. You're eating whole foods, 
foods rich in vitamins and your micronutrients and it's really just food for the soul it is so nourishing so the first day we were introduced to the facilitators we took a tour of the area and we were just learning more about uh, ayahuasca we were just educating ourselves further and so we took it easy and then we went to sleep and then the next morning the first thing that we did was something called vomitivo and it's exactly as it sounds it involves vomiting and so you take this lemongrass tea and you take a lot of it so you continue to chug this lemongrass tea until you feel the urge to vomit and so the purpose is to vomit and so we would all stand on a line and there would be four people vomiting at a time and all of us back here are cheering them on it's very strange um, very interesting but it's really fun at the same time but the purpose of it is to go through the motions of vomiting and to get comfortable with it because during ayahuasca it is there's a chance that you are going to be vomiting and you want to be comfortable with releasing the whole with ayahuasca during the ceremonies it's very important to surrender and to release so that was the first thing in the morning and then we just kind of chilled for the rest of the day enjoyed the pool the hammocks um, all of that and just kind of prepared for the ceremony at night now you can go into your ceremonies with intentions or you could just have an open mind and just say okay ayahuasca whatever it is that you want to show me or have me experience I'm open to that so you don't need to set intentions it is optional but um, I did set some intentions for sure so the first night um, we go into the maloka and that's where we perform the ceremonies um, and everyone will be sitting side by side we all have our own beds um, you have your flashlight there you've got toilet paper you've got some perfume you've got um, you know just your essentials everyone has their own st stuff you even got a bu bucket for vomiting in case that does happen um, so the first night we all were in our beds and we took a small dosage of ayahuasca so everyone took the same dose the first night and the idea was just to introduce you to the ayahuasca if it's your first time you don't know how your body reacts so they don't want to give you a lot the first time because they want to be you know responsible about that to see how you react to it so for me that first ayahuasca experience was very gentle very soft you know i felt the medicine coming on very slowly very gently and i was just like bliss it was just a lot of gratitude a lot of love just in my own you know element um, and you know afterwards the next day after talking with everyone it seemed that everyone had a similar experience uh, many people felt the same way where it was just like a gentle introduction to ayahuasca and it helped us to develop trust in the plant medicine because prior to that day I think most of us were nervous you know we've never done this before we don't know what, what to expect so it's normal it's natural to feel a sense of nervousness um, or maybe even be a little bit intimidated but after that first night when you had that gentle introduction you've now developed trust with the medicine where you know for the second night I was actually excited to go into it and I was totally calm totally relaxed um, didn't have any nerves because of the previous night so I think that was really well done really um, smart the way that they did it um, and so the, the second night I took a larger dose um, and the second night for whatever reason I didn't feel anything so I sat there and I waited for the medicine to come on I waited and I waited and it just wasn't coming on and I could have gone up to take more but I kept on waiting because I was in my head too much I was very logical I thought well according to last night I had more than I had last night so I should technically be feeling something so if not if I'm not feeling something maybe it's because I'm not allowing the medicine to work so I just have to relax and allow it to do its work um, and so I ended up never going for a second dose so I spent the whole night sober and it felt like I was the sober person at the party when everyone else was drunk and it actually was a very good test for me because I started to get very impatient very irritated I started to be repulsed by the sounds I was hearing in the room um, because there are people everyone's going through their own experience people vomiting um, some people crying uh, so it became really challenging and the ayahuasca lasts about six hours 
So I felt like I was six hours, like, ah, I just want to get out of here. Um, but it was a good test. So even though the medicine, you know, wasn't technically working for me, it was still a good test because I tested my patients. And I also realized that, you know, hey, maybe this is something that I need to work on, you know, feeling left out. Everyone else is on it and I'm not, so I'm the one who's left out. So it, it brought up some stuff that I was able to ponder. Okay, so the third night. Um, the third night was a totally different experience, um, totally out of this world. And the ceremonies are done back to back. So Solterra, you could do five nights or you could do seven nights. Um, and it depends on what you choose to do. Uh, what retreat. So if you do the five nights, you do three ceremonies back to back. If you do the seven nights, I think you do two ceremonies back to back, one day of break, and then two ceremonies. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it is. Um, and we even had two people who did the seven nights, and then they decided to stay longer at Solterra and do another five nights because they felt like there was unfinished business. So they stayed to do more ceremonies, which was you know, I really respect that because, you know, you go through a lot for sure. <laughs> um, so the third night I was excited to, you know, I was like, hey, this is my last chance. You know, I really want to experience this medicine. I really want to get something out of this and, and do some healing. And um, I decided to take more. So I took a larger dose and it took a while for it to kick in for me. So I was laying around for a while and it took, you know, I was considering going up to get more because I felt like at this point I should be feeling it. Um, so I was still kind of in my head. You can hear when I'm talking, you know, there's a lot of being in my head. And the beauty of this, the ayahuasca is that you, you move from your head, you get out of your head. <laughs> so I eventually started it to feel it come on and it came on slowly, which was nice. And in the beginning, I started to feel a lot of gratitude, a lot of love, and this is a recurring theme for me where there was just a lot of gratitude and a lot of love that was flowing through me. And um, I started to think of certain people in my life and just think of how much I love them and just think about you know all the things I respect about them and appreciate about them. And it was all this feel-good stuff, which I liked. I was happy with it. It was like, great. Um, and then I started to actually be more intentional about what it is that I wanted to focus on. And so I started to think about different things in my life. One of those things was my dad. So my dad passed away when I was 19 years old, um, kind of suddenly, I would say. Um, and I never, I never dealt with that. I never got a chance to mourn him. Uh, when I was 19, I think the next day or soon after his passing, I went straight to work as a way to distract myself because I didn't want to sit with those emotions. And I just pretended like nothing happened. I didn't talk to anyone about it. I didn't go through therapy. Um, I didn't do any of that. I just suppressed everything, um, thinking that I'm strong, I'm going to move on. You know, this is what happened. Okay, that's happened. Time to move on. No need to dwell on that. So that was kind of my approach. And uh, ayahuasca, during the ayahuasca, I really realized how important it is to mourn. How important it is and how beautiful it is. You know, how beautiful it is to have loved someone so much that their presence, you know, the lack of their presence makes you feel sad and upset or pain. You feel pain because they're not there. You know, that's just a representation of how extraordinary that person was in your life or how much they meant to you. So I really learned how important it is to mourn. It's important to feel the full spectrum of emotions. We so often, we, we strive to feel happy and joy and peace and all these positive emotions and we try and shy away from feeling any negative, emo negative emotions um, like guilt or sadness or shame or desperation or um, anger, you know? But these are all the emotions. There are so many emotions that we are built to experience and to feel, and it's important to feel them. So what happens is that when an emotion arises, we try and stuff it away. We try and push it down because we don't wanna feel it. But then what happens is that emotion just gets suppressed. 
you never had a chance to experience it fully because when you experience it fully, that is how it can actually release itself. That is how it can actually cycle out. It is a cycle. You need to experience it and then it can actually be let go. But if you're constantly suppressing it, those emotions just stay there and they never get dealt with. And so I learned that uh, when I thought about my dad, about how, yeah, that's something I definitely suppressed. Um, and during my ayahuasca, I was able to mourn him. I cried and I laughed and it was like just so incredible because I didn't just mourn him, but I celebrated him. And I was able to think about the things that would otherwise make me sad, like when, you know, walking down the aisle and not having my dad to walk me down the aisle on my wedding day. And I actually imagined and saw him in his tuxedo, which was hard to imagine because I don't think I've ever seen my dad in a tuxedo except on his wedding photo, um, walking me down the aisle and him being so happy and elated to see me and handing me to Stefan and shaking Stefan's hand and telling Stefan, you know, she's yours now, you take care of her. And I saw him with my mom. <laughs> I saw him with my mom who they had separated and they had a very turbulent relationship. And unfortunately, you know, they could have had such a great relationship and I actually mourned their relationship because for what it could have been, but the money always got in the way. And that was actually a big motivation for me to become financially successful because I saw how the money was always, you know, the, the root of their arguments and it ended up tearing the relationship apart. And I saw them together at the wedding and I saw him hugging her and her crying and him saying it's okay. And I saw so many beautiful things. Um, and it was so blissful, so peaceful to see that. And then at the end of it all, my dad, you know, went away, but he said, you know what, Tatiana, you can always come to me. I'm always here. I'm not gone. You can always visit me. In fact, I want you to visit me. And it was a reminder of how, yeah, you know, like when you have a loved one that's passed, they might not physically be here, but you can always visit them. You can always talk to them. And it's so peaceful to do that because if you do have unfinished business, if there are things that you wanted to say that you didn't get a chance to say, or forgiveness that you didn't get a chance to do, you can still do that. And I, I would encourage you to do that because it's very healing. Um, so that was like one of my experiences and it was very intense. And, and that's the beautiful thing about ayahuasca is it helps you to raise your level of consciousness to take you out of your ego for at least you know a moment or at least during the ceremony. And when you're out of your ego, you can see life from a new lens. You can see things differently. You're not limited to your perspective and you can gain new insights. And so there was a lot of that going on. And so the medicine started to get more intense for me. And I would take some breaks to try and walk outside and get some fresh air or go to the bathroom and then go back inside the Maloka. Um, but it started to get quite intense. And uh, I started to feel like my senses were um, overactive. So. My body temperature was getting very high. It was very hot. My, my clothes were soaked in my sweat. Um, I, it was just becoming very, very overwhelmed. Uh, there was a lot that was going on, a lot. Um, and so towards more the end of the night, maybe the last three hours of the night, um, it was just a very intense experience. It's hard for me to explain what it was, but I actually got to a point also where I was feeling so much love and so much gratitude, and I never knew that you could feel too much of a positive emotion. But on that night, I swear, I felt like it was too much of a positive emotion, like my heart was bursting, like it was painful to have so much gratitude. Like I had moments where I was on my knees and I was just, worshiping God and just so grateful for all the blessings in my life. And ayahuasca, Solterra, this is not a religious experience. So for any of you who are saying that, oh, this is a religious thing, it, it doesn't have to be. And at Solterra, they don't insert religion into the experience at all. It's whatever your personal experience is. So if you have a personal relationship or a religion or a relationship with God, then that might be something you experience. But some people, they never experience anything with God. Some people are atheists and they experience God for the very first time. 
So it's, it's deeply personal, but the ayahuasca itself, it, of course, it's a medicine. I mean, it's not a religious thing. There are some tribes who use it in a religious manner, um, but at Solterra, religion's removed from the equation. This is, this is purely just healing for anyone, everyone. There are no exclusions. Um, so for me, though, personally, there was a lot, you know, God was a huge part of my process, and even before attending Solterra and going into the ceremonies, I prayed a lot for God to protect me. Um, and uh, during the ceremony, I really felt like this deep, this deep love for, for just God's creations and everything in nature. So I'm not gonna go too much more in, in, into the details about what it is that I saw and experienced because um, you know, there's, there's just so much. Um, but also because, you know, this is such a personal experience. You know, what I saw, what I experienced is going to be so different than what it is for you. Like, everybody has a unique experience. Stefan, who was with me, he was sitting on the opposite end of the room. He had a completely different experience than me. So keep that in mind when you're hearing other people share their stories about their ayahuasca experience. Just because it's that for them doesn't mean it's going to be for you. The last thing I will share about my experience is that the facilitators at Solterra are just so incredible. I'm so grateful for them. Um, there's one facilitator named Jocelyn, whom I had asked for help. At a certain point during my experience, I just felt like I needed help because I didn't feel like I could get through the rest of the night by myself. And that was another takeaway, is just being able to ask for help is okay. You know, it's okay. It took a lot of courage for me to ask for help. I was like, are we allowed to ask for help? And I, I finally did it, and I'm so glad I did, because Jocelyn was a godsend. She was an angel. She was, she helped ground me so much um, when I was way up here, just to have someone to talk to, um, someone to kind of support me when I was falling over, um, someone to just help me to kind of, weigh this weight this out uh, was just incredible and so the level of respect I have for these facilitators after that third night I just what they do they're there because they love people they're there because they want to help people they're there because they believe in the power of plant medicine and the healing that takes place at Solterra and I have so much respect for them because when people are in distress during the ayahuasca experience, you know, they're there to support them and to help them through it. And that is so amazing. And that's why I wouldn't do this anywhere else. I wouldn't do ayahuasca at any other place because the level of care and empathy and love that came through those facilitators was just unexpected and so much appreciated. And, um, yeah, I, I say that I wouldn't have been able to get through that night without her, but she reminds me that yes, I would have. I would have been able to do it myself, um, but I'm just so eternally grateful for her support because it was, yeah, the most intense thing that I've ever gone through in my life. I do wanna read you guys this quote. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own soul. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Carl Jung. So I love this quote because I feel like it really kind of encapsulates the journey of ayahuasca. You know, there are gonna be dark times. It might be scary, but it's, it's having the courage to bring that darkness to light. So just to wrap up guys, my experience with ayahuasca was transformative. And I'm so glad that I did it, as intense as it was, I'm very happy that I did it because now one month later, I feel different. I feel, I'm starting to feel those benefits and there's a light, there's an energy that you feel post ceremony that stays with you for a period of time. And that's also why you follow the dieta for a period of time so that you can maintain that energy. It's amazing that it comes from nature. You know, it's so easy, we so easily trust these pharmaceutical companies to give us medications for our illnesses. Um, these are pharmaceutical companies that are billion dollar companies that make money every time we buy their drugs and that these are synthetic chemicals that we're ingesting, but we are so suspicious about 
uh, medicine that comes from nature. You know, what's more natural than plant medicine? And yes, you do need to educate yourself and you do need to do your due diligence and make sure that you are healthy enough to take plant medicine. But, you know, it's as natural as it gets. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, God has supplied this for us on earth. So, um, Solterra is really incredible. I'm going to link their website down below because they have a lot of information on their website. So you can learn more about plant medicine, about ayahuasca. You can learn more about their tradition, how they do it at Solterra because it's different between the countries, Peru, Brazil, Colombia. Everyone kind of does it differently. So you can learn how they do it. You can learn more about the facilitators there. You can learn about the pricing. All of that information will be there. Um, again, I would not do it anywhere else. I highly recommend going to Solterra. And it's a treat for yourself. You know, it's a treat for you to get away, to take some time for you. You know, a lot of people there, they had kids. They left their kids to come and do work on themselves and give themselves that gift. So it's, it's nice to kind of get away and be in this luxury environment where you're having really amazing food, you're meeting really amazing people, and you're just really enjoying this environment. So thank you guys for watching. If you have questions, comment down below. Again, everyone's experience is different, so this was just mine. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I forgot to say that I wanted to say because there's just so much. But this is the best I can do for now. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay blessed.